offensive line coach here. How important is blocking for tight ends for you? I would say it's high on the list. We could say that much. And and coming from the foundation that we teach up front, right, tying it in to what Coach Mirabal does at the line of scrimmage, it's we're asking them to know a lot. You know, from a front identification to a mic ID, there's a lot of stuff that goes in it that we have to speak the same language to them on every from whether it's run game or protections. So it's very, very important for us to be able to communicate and be on the same page with them. Coach, Coach Christopher called you, you know, one of the best young coaches in the country. Just what are your thoughts on that? And what are some things that you learned from this year in that group? I, I look, I'm nothing special. Listen, I can tell you that much right now. I've, I've been very blessed to be around Coach Chris Ball and Coach Mirabal, I consider those two people, if I had mentors and fathers in this industry, those are my guys. I, I, I was Coach Chris Ball's GA, uh, Coach Mirabal's GA. I took a little hiatus and came back and linked back up with them our last year at the last stop. And again, being around those guys every single day helps me strive to, I want to, I want to mimic what they do and how they handle themselves. So again, it's not about me, it's about the people around me. Like I said, I've, I've been, Fortunate enough to be around Coach Dawson now the last few months, our OC, right? Y'all met Coach Harris, right? All these new coaches that were around, man, they're unbelievable. And they're competitors and they, they, we drive the culture as coaches and I just try to follow their lead, you know? So that's just kind of where that comes from, hopefully. But like I said, I, I'm just trying to have fun with it and, you know, do the best I can, so. You've crossed paths now with Cam McCormick twice, Oregon yeah. and Miami. Yeah. Uh, anything you could share with us about him? Man, what a guy. Again, he, Cam is one of the toughest, most diligent kids I've ever been around. Like, I mean, the kid loves football. And obviously, if you know more about his story and the trials and tribulations that he's been through, one, he's, he loves football not because he's in a, in a selfish manner. He loves it because he's a great teammate. And he loves building those relationships with the teammates around him. And he's a fantastic human being. And he's a blessing to be able to coach every day. So, again, I'd take a million of them just like him. So, Coach Field, obviously, you said the division before. I mean, you guys worked yeah. together a ton. How much is he still involved with helping you or just giving advice, that kind of stuff? Oh, he's there every day. Again, me and Coach Field, I've been fortunate to work with, with, with Coach uh, two, two stops now. Once at our, at our last stop and now here over this past year. And me and him, he's one of my best friends. And, again, he he's with us every single day, grinding it out. And I know he's moving into a role with Coach kind of helping him with multiple different things throughout the program, but he's with us as much as possible and every single day if it can be. So, What should people expect out of this tight end group in this uh, offense under Shannon Dawson? Uh, electric, explosive, right? We're putting these guys in situations to go be in space and make plays, right? But we ask them to do a lot. You're going to be in – we talked about it today, right? There's been able to dominate all three phases of the game, right? Run game, protections, and pass game, right? you got to build a – Block like an old lineman, and you got to be able to run routes like a receiver and go make plays. But this offense is going to give us opportunity to get in space, right, and create interior mismatches, whether that's with linebackers or safeties. And he reflects out, you know, to the to the boundary one on one and take an opportunity to to throw the ball deep, you know, and go make plays. So it's going it's going to be fun. I can tell you that much. And like I said, the one word I could use is it's going to be explosive. And we're looking forward to putting a great product on the field. So you got two young tight ends that are kind of showing flashes early yeah. uh, and Jackson Carver and Riley Williams. Uh, what are you seeing from them and what, what can their impact be early on? Yeah, first off, they're hard workers, right? They're very diligent, right? They're up here early, they're up here late, man. They, they put in the work that's gonna be necessary for them to develop, right? They got a bunch of strong suits and a lot of stuff they got to continue to, to work and improve, but those guys will have the opportunity to compete and, and get after early, right? They just got to stay on the, the trend that they're heading. And, and like I said, the sky's the limit for both those kids. What about Jaleel Skinner? What do you see there? Um, same thing. A again, for him, for Jaleel, it's the, just the continuing trend of developing, right? He's a very, very long, I mean, unbelievable athlete, like freaky a little, I mean, to a certain extent, right? And he, uh, he just got to continue to develop and, and put on good weight. He's right around that 235 mark right now. And he's only going to get bigger and stronger, and we're going to put him in the right situations to be successful. But his his goal in talking with them personally is to be an every down tight end, right? To be able to use in every situation. That's what he's striving to be, and he can be, and he could play it at a high level for a very long time. And he's just got to continue to work and, and keep going. You know, Still it's a few more questions for Coach Wolf. Yeah, you've been here for a couple of years now with a couple of different coordinators. I would just say 
tight end usage is different in federal yeah. uh, compared to last year's offense and maybe push last year's offense? It's one and the same. All right, we're pretty much running every concept that, that you can ask a tight end to run. We're just calling it a little different verbiage. You know, so it's kind of like learning a, a new language. You know, but again, it's we're asking them, we're putting them in every situation possible. All right, to test them and develop them. So Miami's had such a rich history of developing tight ends over, yeah. over time. Uh, do you feel there's any type of pressure to kind of uphold that legacy being the tight ends coach now? Uh, no, I wouldn't say pressure, but there's urgency to be really good. You know, and again, it's. But that's that's nothing that we're new to, right? We're striving to be great every single day. I right? I wouldn't say added pressure, but there's a sense of urgency for us to uphold that standard, right? That we've been blessed with here in the past, you know. So, like I said, it's and it's it's something that's fun to build. If you can go obtain that, like, I mean, what else would you want to do? I mean, that's I mean, that's unbelievable. So that's what we're trying to do: just be urgent about it and go attack that, you know, level of play that that's always been here. How much time with Greg Olson did you get? Um, we were out here for two hours. You know, he stayed after and talked to us. And I mean, you could tell why that guy's the ultimate pro. I mean, unbelievable mentor. How he communicates with people is unbelievable. All right, his just his personality, his mannerisms, how he treats people. It's top of the line human being. And he, we were out here for two hours. And shoot, the next day we had probably our best uh, one-on-one periods of route running. So we, we learned a couple of tricks of the trade that. Uh, a veteran like himself has so it was it was fun to be around him and uh like i said him and coach chris ball's relationship those guys are in and out the building as much as possible so it's a it's a really cool deal awesome. coach thank you very much thank, thank you